Many games provide a power fantasy, where the player is a master of destruction and takes on scores of enemies. When designing a stealth encounter, it's important to understand that stealth gameplay at its core tends to flip this paradigm on its head. And instead of the player feeling powerful, they're facing an overwhelmingly powerful enemy. The player is placed in an underdog position, and the real enjoyment of stealth is about using your wits and taking advantage of having information over your enemies and the environment to more or less beat the system and achieve victory against what seems like overwhelming odds. This is why we should see stealth encounters as puzzles for the player to solve. The objective, for example reaching an endpoint or eliminating a target, is the solution to the puzzle where the player's tools and level mechanics are the pieces that need to be combined in the correct way to solve the puzzle by making use of their advantage of information. In this video, I'd like to take a look at how we can make use of those puzzle pieces to create a satisfying stealth level while avoiding some common mistakes. Before we dive into the stealth level design principles, let's take a brief look at some examples of those puzzle pieces we'll be using to build our stealth encounters. In this case, I'll use Far Cry 5's Arcade Editor. Some of the most important puzzle pieces we have available to build our stealth encounter with are the player tools. As player tools, we'll classify any game mechanic with which the player can interact with enemies and the environment. The player has loud weapons available, like assault rifles, though the loud noise quickly attracts the attention of enemies. The compound bow makes less noise, allowing the player to take down enemies with lower risk of being detected. The player can do a stealth takedown on an unaware enemy, but this is limited by only being usable from up close and while being undetected. Throwing rocks creates a sound distraction, and the player can move bodies to avoid other enemies finding them when patrol routes or sidelines overlap. The binoculars help observing and tagging enemies to create a plan of attack from a safe distance. In addition to those player tools, other puzzle pieces we have to play around with are what I'll call level design ingredients. Those are elements present in the environment that the player or the enemies can interact with that have some predetermined functionality. For example, foliage like bushes and tall grass conceal the player when crouching. Zip lines allow the player to move from point A to B very quickly and surprise unsuspecting enemies. Where climbing and grapple points give the player a lot of verticality in traversing the space. As a designer, it's crucial to have a good understanding of the ingredients you have available to work with and of their limitations. Now, let's dive into what we can do to create interesting stealth encounters. First off, we want to support multiple solutions and approaches for the player to complete their objective. For example, one straightforward stealth route through the middle. It's the fastest route, but highly contested with enemies. Additionally, we can offer a route with more verticality that allows for a more acrobatic approach. Playing through the more direct route, the player has to carefully time their movements with enemy patrols and sidelines. It's possible to take out some enemies or take alternative routes, but distracting enemies and hopping from cover to cover is crucial. If there is only one viable solution, players tend to feel like they're simply following the intended plan of the designer. The alternative, vertical route, allows the player to make more extensive use of jumping, climbing and grappling. Figuring out which enemies to take out and distract to prevent being spotted here is crucial. We established that the key enjoyment of stealth encounters is found in outsmarting the system, giving players the opportunity to figure out their own way of solving the stealth puzzle really reinforces this feeling. It's important to avoid one tool or method to be able to solve the majority of challenges in the game. For example, if we would give the player unlimited arrows in a setup like this, it would let them take out all the enemies easily without any real downside. If there's one dominant solution, players will keep using them, even if it ends up with the game getting boring very quickly. When the player gets detected during a stealth section, there always needs to be some kind of punishment. Often, games force the player into combat when caught. Other times, getting caught means an instant fail or a chance to run away, hide and try again. If a player gets caught and forced into combat, this should never be the easiest way out. If the combat option is easy for the player to handle, it never creates any real suspense or feeling of danger, 
and more or less makes the stealth encounter completely trivial. When you force the player to restart the stealth challenge all over again, either through an instant fail undetected, or by forcing the player to complete an impossible combat challenge, the outcome can be very frustrating. This is especially true for longer and more elaborate stealth sections. At this point, the player might have already solved the majority of the puzzle, so to then painstakingly have to redo the entire puzzle again while already knowing the answer can be very frustrating. Imagine being halfway through a 1000 piece puzzle and finding out that one puzzle piece doesn't fit. Instead of discarding it and having to look for another one, you'd have to break apart the entire puzzle and begin again from the start. Giving the player the opportunity and tools to flee, hide and continue from there is often a good solution to still punish the player but not too harshly. And just barely escaping with your life can be an exciting experience on its own. Cleverly spaced save points should, if they're an option in your game, help lessen this problem as well. I think that they're usually a better option than allowing quick saving as that allows the player to quick save continuously completely removing the sense of danger from any encounter or risky move as they can just reload their save from a couple of seconds ago and try again. When creating your stealth layout you should make sure that the paths the player can take, the level ingredients that they can interact with and challenges, usually in the form of enemies, are clearly visible for the player. This allows them to make informed choices and actually solve the puzzle, rather than just stumbling across the correct path, or going around a corner just to get spotted by an enemy they couldn't possibly have known would be there, which would feel frustrating and unfair. Adding vantage points at the start of and throughout encounter spaces gives your players the chance to gather information and come up with a plan of attack instead of trying things randomly. Adding smaller safe zones throughout the encounter space also helps with this, allowing players to hop from point to point, dealing with one or two problems at a time. It will help them plan things without getting overwhelmed. Acting deliberately to solve the problem will always feel better than randomly making it through or being forced to deal with problems they could not have anticipated. From this follows that when you're setting up enemy patrol paths, you usually want to make sure the paths are clear and predictable for the player. If they're too chaotic and unpredictable, the player won't be able to recognize a pattern and make their way through based on careful planning. Enemies making 180 degree turns can lead to moments where the player is about to creep up on an enemy and they turn around just before you're able to do a takedown. Whenever possible, it's best to have enemies loop around avoiding 180 degree turns in enemy patrol paths. You also want to make sure that every path the player can take is contested by enemies on a regular basis. When there's even just one uncontested path, players will gravitate to this easier option, though they won't feel the satisfaction of having beaten the challenge. And finally, make sure the player isn't too well protected in their vantage points when combat is an option. If they can easily take cover and freely take pot shots at the enemies below, this will break the entire encounter space. Make sure the player is in some way vulnerable in this spot, for example by reducing cover and allowing multiple flanking routes for the enemy AI. So in summary, what makes a good stealth encounter? Treat your stealth layout as a puzzle. Have a clear picture of your player tools and level design ingredients. Support multiple solutions and approaches. Avoid dominant solutions across your encounters. Punish the player for getting caught. Avoid combat being the easy way out. Allow the player to flee. Make sure the player paths and options are clear. Add vantage points and safe zones along your routes. Make enemy patrol paths predictable enough for the player to make a plan. Avoid 180 degree turns in enemy patrol paths. Ensure each player route is contested, and when combat is an option, make sure vantage points are vulnerable enough. Whenever you're working on a stealth encounter, you can use these basic guidelines to ensure a fun and challenging experience for your players. Thank you so much for watching, and see you in the next video.